Good evening and welcome to week 10 of the live introduction session of Fundamentals of Micro and Nano Fabrication. The course instructors are Professor Susovan Avasti and Professor Sankar Sarvaraja from IIC Bangalore. I am the PMRF teaching assistant Vikas Pandey from IIT Jodhpur. This is a brief about me, the Google Meet link, the YouTube channel and the and my contact details on which you can reach to me in case of any query. So in continuation with the previous topic that is subtractive processes that is how to remove some material or film uh, thin film or a any deposited material from uh, micro or nano fab like in the process of micro and nano fabrication we are discussing so in continuation with that uh, we have already seen wet processes that means where we were using chemicals to etch to etch out yes uh, so your slide is not visible okay uh, are you able to see this sub uh, subtractive processes dry etching no sir the slide is uh, the slide are not displayed uh, now now it is visible so yes okay. so in continuation uh, with the previous topic that is wet etching in which we were discussing about uh, etching using chemicals where we put the wafer inside a chemical and then the etching process happens and there we were using hard masks like uh, photoresist or silicon dioxide such hard masks were used that means physical masks were used now the next pro uh, we saw the advantages and disadvantages along with that there was the problem of contamination and we saw the matrices that are important when we are talking about subtractive processes like i and isotropy and these things the same things will also be applicable for dry etching which we will be discussing today so to understand dry etching one important thing that we have uh, came across many times uh, is plasma and which is which is very important in case of fabrication processes so we have seen plasma many times we have uh, talked about plasma okay so what is a plasma yes uh, any uh, can you answer like what is a what is plasma or are you aware of plasma i, I cannot define it but um, i have seen like when certain uh, when some material uh, is heated to certain energy when it is given then there is some emission of light mm -hmm. and that is called plasma yeah emission of light is part of it true mm -hmm. but uh, it is uh, ideally a state of matter we have uh, seen like we know about solid any uh, matter material or matter can ex exist as a solid it can be changed into liquid or gas but there is a fourth state of matter that is plasma in which it is in the form of ions ionic form and due to ionic form of gas like ion of gas uh, gas of ions in which the material say we are talking about argon so argon is ar but argon positive when we have uh, a lot of argon positive ions scattered in an uh, in a gaseous form in an area that will be called as a plasma it can uh, contain atoms electrons ions molecules or any other excited spaces which is in ionized form overall it has no charge that is why we are not saying it as a uh, like that is why we are saying it as a state of matter because it is overall still neutral no positive or negative charge since all of them will cancel out and there is glow certainly because since ions are uh, excited spaces they will emit some 
light and this light uh, this photon or the light will depend on whatever material we are talking about okay so these are commonly used in cvd pvd etching ion implantation resist removal and chamber cleaning in case of micro and nano fabrication it is also fundamental in transferring patterns onto substrate after lithography lithography is the basic technique plasma is also used it is essential uh, it is very essential for creating the reactive spaces and enabling the dry etching so when we are talking about dry etching we can uh, commonly it is even called as plasma etching etching okay plasma etching or reactive ion etching and this reactive spaces is generated using plasma just are you able to see my slides right now it is um, just black. black yeah i am also just a moment Now you are able to see, right? Yes. Okay. So the plasma, as you said, is uh, colored in nature. This is uh, from a PVD system, uh, like uh, sputtering, okay. in which the argon plasma is used. Here it is argon that is in ionized form. And mixed with like argon, mixed with uh, in this case, I think it is uh, PD palladium that is being generated. When the material, uh, the gas will change, or the material uh, that is getting mixed with with it will change. The color will change, and these colors are quite uh, like they are used to define what material is being, uh, what plasma is there like what material is there in the plasma okay so how these plasma are generated so there are electrodes with applied voltages as we know that when we have high voltage applied across uh, to electrodes they will cause ionization of gases that is present in between them so and why is it so because it requires an initial electron to start ionizing other molecules. High voltage is needed to accelerate these electrons and cause the ionization. Like in this case also you see, sorry, in this case also you will see that here it is positive and below from where this plasma is get, getting generated there it is negative voltage. So due to this, uh, the high voltage that we are giving high potential we are giving we are able to generate our uh, do the ionization due, due to which the plasma will be generated so related to this there is a law called as Parsons law and related uh, to that is the breakdown voltage this breakdown voltage is the point at which this plasma will form this depends on pressure and distance between the electrodes so it is not that uh, if we keep the electrodes at very large distance still we will get it because ideally that field has to be created and if it is uh, very weak that this ionization might not occur okay as well as the pressure is uh, 
crucial. Why pressure? Because pressure will determine how many spaces are present there, how many molecules are present there, which can be analyzed. So a sweet spot that is uh, a point occurs where the breakdown occurs at minimal voltage. And that spot will depend on the pressure and the distance between the electrodes. Okay, so low pressure. This will require uh, this will give us fewer molecules and higher voltage will be required. At high pressure, the opposite will occur that it will have more collisions and thus scattering will occur. So mean free path will increase. They will collide with each other. Uh, not increase. Mean free path will decrease. They will collide with each other. Scattering of electrons will happen, and thus we will need more electrons, uh, more voltage to generate the plasma. That's why this uh, plasma generation is generally done at a lower pressure. So ideally, what is done is that first high vacuum is created. high vacuum is created and then pure or ultra pure uh, gas of what, whatever plasma we want it is inserted but in a limited quantity that is uh, how we get uh, how we maintain a low pressure of the spaces that we want the plasma of. okay and using that we are able to generate our plasma so now oh, there is some one part is missing it seems just a minute okay Let's see just a minute Okay, yeah, it is there. So, ideally, there can be uh, there are two type of uh, plasma we are generating. One I discuss is using high voltage. Second way is RF plasma, where we are using radio frequency or like uh, electromagnetic waves to generate plasma. Here, the RF source creates time varying electric field so and this is generally uh, used where we cannot use high voltage uh, like uh, there can be some capacitive coupling like dielectric is present in between in that case we go for rf plasma generated two electrodes are there in between there is time varying electric field that is ac signal ideally is being applied so positive negative like that so this create plasma between them Second, uh, one way is this capacitive coupling. Second is inductive coupling, where coils generate magnetic field, inducing electric current in the plasma chamber. Uh, the chamber is very simple in this case, that there will be a tube in which, say, you want to generate quartz tube on it, and coils are wanded over it. These turns will determine how much. Uh, electric field will generate and we apply some RF signal to it of uh, design, uh, defined frequency and power which will dissociate the gas, uh, gas present in between. It is a closed chamber. We control the amount, uh, the pressure inside and based on this inductive coupling due to the magnetic field that is uh, being generated by this RF. Uh, RF frequency that will induce electric current in the plasma chamber. So, what are the interaction that happens in the plasma? So, the first is dissociation. Electrons break molecule into radicals. So, we have uh, say this is an example. Say a species A. When electron goes there, it will break it into radicals say a positive okay and it will release some electron along with that then second part is the ionization 
electrons ionize the molecule creating the charged particle third is excitation these electron uh, these electrons that are being released excite other atoms or molecule and that leads to photon emission or the color glow that we see the specific color we see so what is this dissociation in plasma that is electron collides with a molecule breaking into reactive spaces that is it was sitting ideal or it was just moving now an electron hits it and makes it reactive ion like uh, disturbs it in a sense this creates neutral radicals that are chemically reactive that means say species a now it will carry a reactive electronic electron or reactive site that is it is still in the molecular form but it's it is ready for any reaction now since it has been disturbed or activated and that is why uh, this part is an essential because it is the initialization of this formation second is ionization in which an electron knocks out an another electron from the molecule so once it is reactive the same electron or another uh, active electron might knock it out this electron might come out okay and that generates a positive ion say a positive now that space is empty so it is positive in search of any electron in a sense and in ionized form and this gives us an extra electron we started with one single electron now we have two electron and this uh, will lead to excitation that is electron excite atoms to a higher energy state when the atom returns to its ground state that will uh, we know that uh, since the electrons when they return to their uh, lower state they will emit photon that will leads to that will lead to the glow of the plasma optical emission so in short we need to know what is a plasma plasma is ion any ion a positive we can say that is in a uh, gas of ions okay that will actually that can be identified by seeing the glow Hello. Are you able to see my slides now? No, no, it's not visible. Not visible. Let me try again. Sorry. No. No, still not visible. No. Now it's fine. Yeah, it's visible. So, uh, this plasma is used for anisotropic etching. So we saw in the previous lecture that 
one big problem with wet etching was that we were not able to get an isotropic etching because there it is mostly isotropic and we tried many different ways in which we can get an isotropic so plasma to using plasma we are able to get an isotropic etching that is directional etching because plasma offers controlled chemical consumption and cost reduction so here also it will be done chemically it is not that it is done physically here also chemical is involved but that is in the form of plasma not in the form of a wet chemical or a solution okay and since this dry etching process is performed in a vacuum it ensures clean and clean process and automation is easy like uh, in case of uh, wet etching we had to say we have to dip it take it out that is not there. here we load the wafers put inside and then we create the vacuum and then we start the system and it is automatically doing the work and we can automate it an isotropic etching for sharper and more precise patterns is possible since it is a chambered environment controlled environment unlike uh, wet wet etching uh, chemical control is possible and specifically for cost efficiency this is more efficient uh, like if we compare one by one uh, for the for one single wafer or two wafers in that case the plasma etching will be costlier but if we are going for batch processes or like uh, from an industrial point of view we can say that it is it becomes more cost effective and since we are working in uh, vacuum and all it is a cleaner process with reduced contamination automated and scalable for industrial manufacturing now in this process also we need photoresist the pattern for the photoresist why because um, although it can be automated although it will need some like it will need some other kind of uh, mask but generally photoresist is kept why to observe the cross section so that we understand what are the points we want a, want to be patterned what are the points we want to remove and it helps in determining whether there is an undercut or not whether it is isotropic or anisotropic sometimes due to some fault some isotropic etching might happen you need a, uh, like we want unidirectional or directional etch but sometimes isotropic etching can happen so during this process also we don't remove the photoresist we keep the photoresist as it can like removing it may lead to some misinterpretation we might not understand properly that whether the etching is happening or not then is uh, etching of non planar surfaces okay what if we have to etch in case of uh, corrugated or non planar like uh not a plain surface some rough patterns are there so this isotropic etch removes material from both vertical and lateral sides we know whereas highly directional etch will remove only in the vertical direction leaving side walls coated so these are uh, possible using plasma etching or dry etching so what are the methods of this that are doing this uh, doing this directional etching so for the dry etching method we have uh, two type one is glow discharge method which is uh, plasma etching uses uh, so simplest one is plasma etching all of these are actually based on uh, 
like they are modification of the plasma etching only you can say simplest one is plasma etching that uses reactive gases and have low energy second is reactive ion etching and this is one of the most common one that is employed in case of dry etching this uses reactive ions not just gases specific ions we are using say oxygen or such reactive spaces chemical spaces we are using here we are just inserting some inert gases maybe but in case of uh, rie reactive ion etching we put some spaces like oxygen chlorine and these things are used to do the etching then glow discharge sputtering this uses inert gases and this is a physical process so it is very similar to sputtering where the ions will go and hit it and remove the material in the specified area so this comes under glow discharge method second is ion beam method inert uh, so one uh, one of this is inert gas ion beam that is no reactive neutrals and it is purely physical in nature that is the ions the not no reactive it is non reactive and neutral so no reaction is taking place it is neutral still inert gas okay and purely physical etch second is chemically assisted ion beam etching combination of ions and reactive neutrals okay so what are the parameters that are taken care when we are talking about dry etching methods one is excitation frequency whether it is to be done using dc power source or rf power source so in case of dc there is uh, no relevance of this frequency but in case of rf we have to determine the frequency second is the power how much power is to be given or amount of the energy supplied second is uh, third is gas flow rate this controls the gas concentration and the reaction rates this is one of the important factors that we this and this uh, power and gas flow rates these are one uh, some of the important factors that determine the etching then discharging nature whether uh, what is the sorry just what is the uh, chemical and electronic properties of the plasma uh, that is uh, whether it's neutral it is reactive or what kind it is okay then geometric factors like what is the size of electrodes the chamber design the distance and these things and pumping speed that is what are the uh, pumps used to create the pressure to control the pressure inside the chamber so what are the interactions that are taking place when this etching process is going on so one is mm, one of the uh, plasma and surface interaction that is depending on the surface properties of our wafer so we have the wafer in which we have to do the etching suppose we have to remove these areas okay so whether this surface is conductive or insulative that will determine uh, that will be one factor second is temperature so if it is a reactive ion based etching like ri in that case the temperature will also play a role since it will affect the surface reaction and we know that any kind of reaction is affected by the surface next is surface potential that is uh, the surface potential of our wafer that will determine influence the attraction or repulsion of the species we are thinking that uh, this species say a or b positive will come and clean uh, like remove this area but 
what if this uh, surface itself is repulsive to this species or what if it is uh, it just attaches and it does not uh, let it go away from the surface that will depend on the surface potential or the chemical option uh, you say chemical option activation energy that is there so these factors are to be understood to determine the h rate and h in profile of the material so this uh, in this process of plasma generation the gases that we have that uh, dissociates in the plasma for example if we are doing the uh, etching using methane ch4 the plasma produces ions the radicals and some neutral molecules whereas if we are uh, taking for example oxygen i said no, with uh, generally oxygen and argon these things are very common oxygen chlorine for reactive ionization the plasma produces simpler products like if we are dealing only with oxygen simple uh, ions will be produced whereas if when we are dealing with methane there will be combination of ions radicals and neutral molecules whereas uh, in case of argon only uh, ions and neutral atoms as in case of a inert gas that is argon xenon if we are using in all these cases they will be uh, only ions and neutral atoms uh, used as the uh, for any inert gases so the plasma we are talking about they can be of two types and based on this we determine uh, what kind of etching they will be able to do one is low density plasma in which we have fewer charged particles or primarily radicals just a minute so hello hum a class mein class le raha hu main acha is mangal bhar raha hu mujhe to na photo khinch ke ek ek karke ek ek bhej dete na thoda no नौ बजे के बाद मैं कॉल करूंगा ठीक है so in uh, low density plasma we have uh, fewer charged particles they are primarily radicals in case of high density plasma we have higher concentration of charged particles that includes radicals and h gases that is uh, the chemicals that we here mostly the chemicals that we are going to use for our etching that will be in the gaseous form so high density plasmas are preferred for efficient etching and sustaining the plasma a low density plasma may not lead to good quality of etching so ions are important radicals are important for etching but what is the role of uh, this uh, electrons in plasma they are uh, the mobility of electrons is key in sustaining the plasma and driving reactions when we are uh, practically dealing with plasma it might happen that uh, plasma is generated and it is not able to sustain it might uh, like you will see the glow and it will not sustain or it might happen that you will see flicker of uh, this plasma forming then not sustaining then again forming not sustaining so in this case the electron mobility is a key factor so and the second thing is that the electron the flow of charge is happening through electrons 
Why? Because they have much higher mobility than ions as they have lower mass. So, and they are also involved in dissociation, ionization, and plasma sustainment. So, the flow of electrons is important in case of this plasma formation. So, when we are talking about plasma, the plasma also creates a potential. One is the bias voltage that is we are given to create the plasma. But this plasma itself will create some potential and that on the uh, say if we are putting the wafer inside that will develop a potential, a floating potential. If it is insulate, suppose that we are putting silicon. So it is ideally an insulator if we are talking about pure silicon or say any dielectric material or silicon coated with SiO2. Okay. When it is inserted into the plasma, a, a potential, floating potential will develop over, over it. So the positive voltage that is created in the plasma due to the loss of electron, we are seeing that uh, the argon is there, argon positive is forming. So a positive voltage is forming since we have all the atoms uh, all the atoms are losing electron to form the ions this voltage created is called as the plasma potential and along with this we have a difference in the uh, movement uh, mobility of this uh, what you say ions and the electron so the mobility of ions is say at some speed and the electrons in the opposite direction is at a higher speed so due to this there will be a difference created and that will lead to creation of self bias voltage so what is the role of this floating potential in plasma so we saw that when an insulating surface is placed and in plasma electrons accumulate creating a negative charge and due to this the positive ions will get attracted leading to neutralization over time and as such the floating potential which is negative in nature will form plasma potential occurs when electrons scatter and are lost to grounded chamber walls so the whole chamber that is our reaction chamber this is grounded so some electrons will get grounded and as such uh, they are lost to the grounding chamber and we will see a plasma potential potential occurring and due to this the plasma will tend to uh, become slightly positive due to electron loss and using this uh, grounded chamber we can uh, measure the plasma potential what is the plasma potential and this plasma potential is actually uh, used to determine the rate of uh, reaction or rate of the etching that is happening so what are the source we can use like uh, I said one is dc second is rf dc will simply be continuous direct current so simply anode and cathode connected to say positive and negative giving high voltage second is rf glow discharge that is two electrodes again but connected to a electromagnetic oscillating source or a rf source or ac signal we can say so we will see what is the difference between these two if we are going for DC glow discharge or RF glow discharge. So when we talk about DC glow discharge, it is uh, cathode connected to a DC voltage source. Cathode is energized negatively and attracts the positive ions. Whereas the anode will be grounded. So we have two plates, not uh, exactly in uh, parallel platform at a like it can be circular but we are saying that seeing from the side we have 
two plates separated by a distance. We have the cathode connected to positive, anode connected to negative, okay, uh, negative or grounded. Positive ions get accelerated towards cathode, and that's why they will eject secondary electrons, like we see, saw that A electrons that was leading to A positive plus two electrons. So one second secondary electron is ejected. The positive ion energy is the sum of uh, Vp and Vc where Vp is the plasma potential and Vc is the drive potential. So one plasma potential is developing one drive potential that is the uh, voltage we are giving this vp is slightly positive and it will be the sum of this uh, two that will give the positive ion energy so when we when we are moving towards this like when we are going towards our Oh, sorry, uh, this was cathode. Right? So when we are moving towards our, since this we are saying that zero, when we are moving towards the anode, the potential will gradually decrease. Plasma, and we have seen that plasma potential is slightly positive due to electron loss. Potential decrease across the plasma from cathode to anode. So if we see uh, the plasma it will uh, not be uniform if we see it uh, closely we see that the glow is much stronger near the cathode and when we go towards the anode gradually it will fade a bit so uh, a zero crossing of plasma uh, potential occurs at the boundary of the plasma region so when we see the plasma like uh, we are seeing laterally when we see it from the three dimensional view we'll see a zero potential so where the potential is zero say here there there will be a boundary of plasma region forming so ideally it is uh, formed like if it is these two electrodes are of whatever shape that will also determine the shape of our plasma forming Whereas if we are talking about RF glow discharge, so it is a RF source with a blocking capacitor. One plate is powered by RF and the other is grounded. So we have one grounded anode, uh, not anode, it is simply grounded. And here we have positive and negative changing. So this is ideally zero. And this is going positive and negative positive and negative okay the blocking capacitors uh, that uh, that is connected with this uh, that will uh, get charged and discharged this will create a self bias voltage so here also we are creating a dc bias but since we don't want the accumulation of charges since uh, in that that way we are creating a self bias voltage so the electrons are repelled from the power electrode sorry <coughs> hello are you able to hear me i am audible yes sir yes okay sorry i am my sore is um, like I'm not able to speak properly today. So the ions are attracted to the power electrode due to the potential difference. So if this is zero voltage, and even if it is positive 
or negative in both the cases there is a potential difference with uh, respect to the ground positive or negative okay so the ions are attracted to the power electrode due to this potential difference and in this case also electron loss will occur at chamber walls due to the electron mobility since the mobility of electrons is higher compared to ions some electron loss is uh, supposed to happen near the electrodes in this case also we will see higher uh, collision and excitation so here the uh, like the glow will be more towards both the electrodes since uh, it is not unidirectional in nature in case of dc we saw that towards the negative potential uh, that towards the negative this uh, the glow decreased in this case the glow will be higher towards both the sides since it is fluctuating again and again in the center we will see lower glow okay so and in this case a dark space forms between the electrodes and the plasma region so we will see glow uh, like a profile of uh, we can say that this is if we are saying that these two are the electrodes so there will be a dark region high glow uh, lower and then again high glow and then a dark region a separation occurs at this point like near the near the two electrodes you will see a small dark space that is called a sheath that forms between the electrode and the plasma region so in uh, near the electrodes like uh, it will be bright but there will be a separation between the uh, actual electrode and the plasma region this glow is from the excitation of the gas molecule and since the rf signal is oscillating between positive and negative cycles during the positive cycles electrons accumulate on the power electrode electrons will move towards the power electrode since it is positive and electrons are negative they will be rushing towards it and in the next cycle the electrons are re repelled into the plasma generating the collision so it is like sucking out the electrons from the plasma region and then forcing them back in and as such they in a sense they accelerate then they are uh, then they are repelled back to form the uh, to continue the plasma so a self biased voltage that is a dc voltage develops due to this uh, due to the blocking capacitance or the blocking capacitor so over a period of time since this cycle continues the potential stabilizes and that uh, then we are able to maintain a consistent ion energy so uh, this whole potential is um, presented in a curve called as black curve that represents the time average potential showing the overall plasma stability how much was the overall uh, stability or overall potential of the plasma so it is uh, generated uh, like it is generated by the system itself after the completion of the whole process so what is the uh, key points that we have to take for a dc discharge it requires conducting electrodes and ion energy depends on plasma and the drive potential for rf discharge it uses a blocking capacitor to develop self bias so in this case it is having more energetic plasma due to efficient power transfer plasma behavior will depend so it is not just that we are creating a plasma what is the source of plasma that will also determine the uh, behavior of our plasma okay. 
then this RF discharges are more efficient to produce high plasma potential and energetic ion and in turn this plasma potential and electron behavior are important to understand the etching efficiency how much efficient it will be okay so we have seen um, we have understood that uh, plasma is there plasma is response is what we will we have been using in case of cvd we have been seeing in case of pvd but here we saw that plasma is important but how will we utilize this plasma for the dry etching okay so dry etching or the plasma systems evolved uh, evolved over a period of time okay they were first a barrel reactor system or mainly used for cleaning and photo rest removal so it was simply a barrel like i saw uh, inductively coupled not even inductively coupled just plasma getting generated and it is still used for cleaning purposes then come downstream plasma so in this case plasma was generated in one chamber and transferred to downstream so generating and then transferring it to another then capacitively coupled plasma which includes rf diode and triode configuration then inductively coupled plasma systems which are able to generate high density plasma system so we have to understand how this configuration impact the plasma generation and the performance of our etching process so barrel uh, if we see the barrel etching it is simply an isotropic plasma good for cleaning purposes and photo rest removal gas enters the barrel rf generated plasma surrounds the material okay so we have a barrel gas is entering the required pressure is maintained and then out like that will get removed also not removed in the sense we will sustain that uh, pressure okay and the rf generated plasma will be around the material whatever we want to do the etching so the plasma will be around this material in case of downstream plasma plasma created separately and this radicals are sent downstream to etch the substrate so in a chamber say we are creating the plasma and then we are transferring this plasma to another chamber where we have our etching to occur and then it will move out so reactive ions are no removed there so this is ideal for process where radical based etching is needed ion based etching is not required radical based etching so that we don't want that ion to form plasma will form but we don't want the ions to form then the next generation is capacitively coupled plasma ccp systems so it has again three type of systems planar diodes it is a simple design with one powered electrode and a grounded chamber so the chamber itself is grounded so this will act as the anode and one powered electrode so electrode is there and the whole chamber itself is grounded so this one will be positive but here there is a limited control over ion energy and flux then comes the triode system where it can have a single frequency and dual frequency configuration in this case uh, improved control of ion energy is possible and reduced electron sputtering so electrons will not scatter too much we can control okay. then there are dual frequency systems <coughs> so 
which has separate control over ion flux and energy using high and low frequencies. Then uh, if we talk about inductively coupled plasma systems, it uses a coil to create a magnetic field generating plasma through induction. So using an electric field and uh, certainly in this case uh, with, if we are talking about it will be an RF or AC we are generating magnetic field and that will in turn gen uh, generate the uh, plasma through induction okay in this case the density sorry the density is higher and the energy is lower although the plasma is of high density a lot of uh, ions will um, form radicals will form but the energy is low at the substrate creating lower damage there are two type of inductively coupled plasma systems coil mounted on a planar fashion above the chamber so we have a chamber and on the top we have say circular coil kind of pattern okay so this is one configuration second one is cylindrical like i showed we have tube on the tube we have such structures wandered over it for higher plasma density so this one will uh, cylindrical icp will actually generate higher plasma density so and uh, so what is the main advantage of icp systems is that since the density is high but energy is low we will be able to reduce the substrate damage it will not uh, create too much damage to so our substrate because when we are talking about high energetic uh, particles they will ge certainly generate some damage to our substrate so how do we control the ion flux and ion energy if we are talking about ion uh, energy higher ion energy will certainly cause substrate heating and unwanted physical sputtering which we don't want whereas if we are talking about low ion energy it can lead to inefficient etching so if we are talking about flux uh, ionic flux that is the density of ions if we have a high flux and low energy that will lead to better etching without damaging the substrate whereas if we have high energy along with high flux that will cause overheating caused by uh, overheating and it is actually used for sputtering that is uh, that will add to remove one material and put over other we have seen in the case of pvd so if we compare the icp and ccp uh, inductively coupled plasma and capacitively coupled plasma this icp allows for high ion flux with lower ion energy and that is why it is superior for precise etching we have large amount of small uh, like low energy ions and we are so if it is in less density it will be inefficient but we have adequate amount of uh, plasma forming in low energy so it will be slow and uh, precise control will be there so what is the mechanism of the plasma etching we have been talking about plasma types of plasma sources of plasma and everything but how what are the <clears throat> how this plasma etching occurs how it happens so there are three key elements involved in plasma etching one is reactive spaces that must generate radicals that can chemically react with the substrate second is 
the volatile products. Due to this reaction, a vo some volatile products should form because we don't want this product to deposit. We want it to be removed. So it must be volatile and easy to remove. And that is removal. Byproducts must be extracted from the system to avoid redeposition. So we have to understand how ions, neutrals, and electrons contribute to this effective etching. What are the uh, key parameters we have to take place uh, to understand? So, what is the role of ions in etching? Ions also uh, ions enable etching, like uh, xenon fluoride and argon ions. Xenon fluoride, if it is used alone, it will lead to minimal etching of silicon. When it is uh, used along with uh, argon ion, that will enhance the etching rate. It is not just that the uh, etching gases are needed for material removal. One is not sufficient. Along with that, we need the ion, like ions and etching gases. So, xenon fluoride is the etchant that we are using for removing silicon. But if it is directly used as a gas, it is not able to remove that efficiently. When used with argon ions, it is uh, efficient in uh, etching the silicon. Then radicals and the ion directionality. The neutral species, they also participate in the chemical reaction like chlorine or chlorine radicals so their movement is not controlled by the electric field the charge we are put, putting that will not determine the direction of uh, directionality of these uh, radicals because they are not influenced uh, like since they are neutral they will not be influenced so how do we determine the directionality that is through the ions Ion, since they are charged in nature, they are, uh, they can be direction. They can be uh, provided a direction that is the positive ions are attracted to substrate by applying a negative voltage. So we have created a plasma of uh, say positive ions. So if we want them to be attracted, we just apply a negative voltage to the wafer or the substrate that we want. To be etched. So these uh, this directionality improves an isotropic etching because they will not move in all the directions. Say if we say that we are applying a negative bias to this. So the ions will move straight towards this. There will be no uh, isotropy it will be unidirectional and so etching will happen in this dimension not in the in the vertical dimension not in the horizontal direction so but etching will not happen due to this ions it will happen due to the neutral spaces they will react with the substrate but this ion bombardment will help transfer the energy for the reaction so they are present there but the reaction will only happen when they get the adequate energy for the reaction to happen and that is being pro provided by the ions and these ions are directional in nature so plasma is just providing the energy for the reaction to happen in case of etching uh, reactive ion etching or whatever uh, dry etching process we are talking about Second is sidewall protection. So we need uh, we need not uh, remove the sidewalls because 
if we are talking about kitchen we need to protect the side walls say we want to create vertical profiles okay so sorry i don't understand we need to create vertical provide profiles so if we want to go beyond this we need this side walls to be protected so in these cases the form some uh, non volatile films that is stable films are formed like uh, aluminum fluoride and this will protect the side walls enabling an isotropic etching okay so uh, or we can use another method called as boss process in which cycles of etching and deposition is used and this is generally used to create a uh, nano pillars or such structures where one deposition is done then etching is done again a uh, deposition is done deposition to protect like say first we able to etch, etch till here then a layer of deposition will occur that will protect this then next we will again do etching so this area is exposed again a deposition then again removal then again deposition like that so alternate cycles of etching and deposition for deep silicon etching and as such we are able to attain attain a high anisotropy that is say structure high spec ratio say a tunnel kind of structure or say a pillar of silicon such structures are possible and uh, lower temperature increases silicon etch rate but decreases the etch rate of sio2 and photoresist so temperature will depend uh, temperature will determine the reaction rate based on the type of reaction like if we are talking about silicon it is the opposite for sio2 and photoresist it is uh, it will increase like uh, if we increase the temperature the reaction rate will increase a lower temperature reduces radical diff diffusion which limits the lateral edge we want the vertical edge and that is why uh, some uh, dry etching are done at lower temperature and we since we need an isotropic profile so this uh, the lateral etching moment is reduced at lower temperature as well as uh, since these uh, materials become more directional in nature they increase the silicon etch rate so controlling the temperature can enhance selectivity and directional directionality in case of plasma etching so what is the chemistry involved for si sio2 etching so since silicon and silicon dioxide are widely used in electronics mems nems photonics and sensors okay we uh, we need to see how the dry etching of si and sio2 happens so mostly halide gases like chlorine bromine fluoride fluorine these are used for the etching and uh, it has to be highly selective between uh, like whatever we are using it has to be highly selected bet selected between silicon and silicon dioxide because uh, generally sio2 is used as the mask to cover the area that we don't want to remove or say it is there in some other no, layer we don't want it to be removed so what are the key things that uh, we use to determine which one we have to select one is edge selectivity that is for application different uh, requiring different material to be edge selective second is we use uh, some noble gases to stabilize the plasma 
like argon, oxygen, helium, hydrogen, nitrogen that will not take part in the reaction. These are used for stabilizing the plasma. So, how the silicon etching occurs? One of the primary gases that is used is CF4, tetrafluoromethane. This supplies fluorine for etching silicon. And this uh, fluorine reacts with silicon, forming silicon tetrafluoride, SiFO. In case of silicon etching, oxygen is generally added. Why? Because it helps prevent the reverse reaction. Like we don't want uh, forming hexafluoroethane, CF4, and these things are not to be formed. As well, uh, so a reverse uh, to stop the reverse reaction, oxygen is added, and oxygen reacts with the carbon, forming CO2. So now once fluorine is removed from tetrafluoromethane carbon species is there and it can react again with the fluorine so it instead of reacting with fluorine it reacts with oxygen since we have added oxygen and co2 is formed so now this carbon species is not available for the reverse reaction to occur and as such the fluorine will now react with silicon forming the silicon tetrafluoride but if uh, we already know that uh, silicon oxide is also a product that can form due to presence of oxygen. So the amount of oxygen that is to be inserted is to be properly op optimized so that excess oxygen may not lead to oxide formation. And in that case, our H rate will decrease. So oxygen is added, but in a limited and controlled quantity. If, when we are talking about silicon dioxide etching, so fluorine can etch both silicon and silicon dioxide. But since uh, we want it to be selective, say we want to etch silicon dioxide only. So <clears throat> if we add hydrogen to CF4 for selective etching, what hydrogen does is that it decreases the polysilicon. Or silicon's H rate, which marginally, uh, like whereas uh, it has very less effect on the silicon dioxide etching, and it uh, results in better control between silicon and silicon dioxide etching. As well as hydrogen reduces the resist H rate. Rate so we get overall uh, like uh, if silicon is present below then we have SiO2 and on top we have photoresist. So adding hydrogen will reduce the H rate with uh, this photoresist as well as silicon. So it will effectively etch out the SiO2 which we want. There is a loading effect that uh, occurs that is non-uniform etching happens due to pattern density. That is, if we have very high, highly dense patterns and our plasma is non-uniform, plasma is not uniformly being formed. Okay, so in that case, we will see some variation in etching. We already know that if we have very close uh, patterns, that can lead to uh, like uh, some con not a proper fusion. Uh, not a proper etching in that area. Second is, even if the plasma is non-uniform, the plasma is not forming uniformly over the surface, that case also can lead to non-uniformity or the loading effect. The loading can be both local or global. One is uh, variation in H rate within the wafer, that is in one wafer, in one area there is uh, one area there is good etching, other area there is not a good etching. Or since I uh, since we said that this process is uh, batch process, like we can put a lot of uh, wafers together. 
so there can be a global loading also like in in case of uh, some of the wafers it is working fine but some other wafers it is not uh, like it didn't pitch properly so when we uh, and there can be other effects like spec ratio dependent etching ard for high spec ratio narrow trenches thin areas are it's much slower compared to wide trenches since it has like if we have such a small area and compared to second area where we have to add such large area so to uh, this trench and this trench and this trench so to etch out this broader trench it is much easier for these spaces to reach there okay so in case of high spec ratio like here when we have uh, the depth uh, much larger now uh, we have to create much larger depth compared to the opening in that case the etch rate can be slower due to restricted diffusion of the etching spaces in the narrow opening leading to etching lag so the solution for this is deep reactive ion etching dri i said that most common one is rie that is reactive ion etching so uh, but in case where it fails we have to go for deep reactive ion etching it is commonly used in mems and tsp application to etch tens to thousands of microns into silicon where we have to get very deep into the silicon it is done uh, it is simply we can say uh, ri combined with bos process so sf6 plasma is used for etching and c4f8 for passivation so in the same chamber we will have alternating steps sf6 plasma that will create, uh, do the etching then we will put c4 f8 for passivation so one trend uh, one etching one passivation again etching and again passivation so this process will be repeated again and again after yeah the whole process is done smoothing is done that is by running isotropic plasma to reduce uh, like if it is done like this so there will be some structure like this forming it will not be very straight right it will be scapel forming so after that it has to be smoothened out once the whole process is done it will be a bit zigzag since it is being not done in one step it is being done alternative like uh, etching passivation etching placement so it is simply ri combined with bos process okay and uh, these are the most common ones that are ri and deep ri these are <laughs> these are for the dry etching processes so next is uh, some problems uh, that are covered in the, this week so which uh, till here any questions you can ask <clears throat> no fine yes yeah. if you are feeling well then you can also skip this issue uh yeah. then we will we'll take it from the pdf if you're not feeling well yeah not an issue like uh, anyway just some questions are left we'll complete it yeah actually some uh, sore throat happened uh, due to this change of weather that's why so which of the following system uh, statements is correct the number of molecules between electrodes 
does not determine the breakdown voltage. So this is the breakdown voltage of the plasma we are talking about. Breakdown voltage is independent of the electrons electrode gap. Increased scattering of electrons at high pressure increases the breakdown voltage. Yes, any answers to this? Uh, C is incorrect. So, C is uh, the correct one because scattering of electrons at high pressure increases the breakdown voltage as as uh, if the uh, pressure is high that means a lot of uh, spaces are present we will need more energy for, for the plasma to form and that is why scattering of electrons at high press pressure uh, increases the breakdown voltage and that is why i said that uh, when we are creating the plasma we first decrease the pressure at lower pressure because we need limited number of ions or limited number of molecules to be present for the plasma to form otherwise they will just keep colliding and they will net neutralize each other that's why the plasma is generally formed in uh, at uh, like 10 to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power minus 3 range of uh, millibar pressure generally uh, it can vary system to system a bit but it is generally in such pressure so we have the molecule present but it is uh, not too much in a plasma chamber the characteristic glow is due to excitation and relaxation of electron dissociation of molecules association of molecules ionization of molecules by electrons a a a that is excitation and relaxation Relax. of electrons the uh, since the excitation of gas molecule is followed by the relaxation of the atoms and as such the electrons are changing their position due to which photons are emitted and so we can see the visible light in a chamber the mean free path of a molecule is proportional to the pressure of the gas av proportional to average dif distance between the collision of the molecule energy of electrons required for ionization a is proportional to pressure of the gas pressure of the gas mean free path is the average distance between the distance between collision the collision of the molecule it is uh, not directly proportional to the pressure of the gas if we increase the pressure of the gas uh, like I mean there, is, the, uh, yeah, there is not a linear relation we can say right, right. at one point it will be optimal after that it will decrease below that also it will lead to other effects which of the following statements is correct electron and ion mobility in the plasma is same the mass of electron is lower than that of ion. This causes electron to move slower than ion. Higher mass of ion causes ion to respond faster than electrons to RF voltage. Mobility difference between ions and uh, electrons result in plasma potential. D is correct. D is correct because actually the electrons move much faster, much faster compared to uh, ions nice. and that's why we get the plasma like uh, plasma potential and that is why uh, the overall voltage although it should be neutral it is uh, the plasma becomes quasi neutral that leads to actually in turns leads to sustenance of the plasma we don't get the plasma dying easily so what is the average time between collision of electrons assuming an average speed of 10 to the power 6 mil meter per second and collision typically occurring between 
uh, every like uh, 0 0.01 meters so what is the average time between collision of electrons any calculations <coughs> B, uh, C is the correct answer, C. Yeah, so how, how we are calculating that? So it's a distance, distance divided by the speed. Distance by the time, uh, speed. And distance we have 0 0.01 and speed we have 10 to the power 6. So we have 10 to the power minus 2 by 10 to the power 6. Uh, this one was meter and this one was meter per second so we'll get 10 to our minus 8 seconds right yeah so c is the correct answer identify the dissociative ionization process from the following plasma event cf3 ion we saw three different stages right so which one will be the dissociative uh, dissociative ionization process cf3 plus with fluorine that yields cf3 radical plus fluorine electron to cf4 that leads to cf2 plus 2 fluorine and electron electron plus chlorine that gives us uh, Chlorine with the uh, uh, Cl2 with the uh, free radical and electrons or electron plus CF4 leads to CF3 ion plus fluorine plus two electrons, which represents ionization, dissociative ionization. B, B, B represents dissociative ionization. B. B. This, uh, where, uh, a molecule breaks okay, to ions. Here also, it is the same reaction. B and D, the same reaction, but uh, the output is manipulated here. It is not forming the ion. Okay. Ion, okay. Yeah. So, seeing the first part, it looks like the same, uh, but ion is not forming here. Ion is forming here. And we see in case of dissociative ion it is generally that one electron is going in and two electrons are coming out an additional secondary ele electron is coming out in an etching process h rate anisotropy is given by a equals to one minus rl upon rb where rl is the lateral h rate and rb is the vertical h rate what will be the condition for anisotropy? I think we have covered this in previous class also, right? C. <laughs> C is the C. Where lateral rate is less than the vertical rate. Vertical. And yeah, that will lead to more directional. That is vertical direct in the vertical direction. So we want the rate of uh, etching to be more in the vertical direction compared to horizontal direction or lateral direction that will give us an isotropy as one no yeah lateral will be zero. yeah one now a process engineer wants to etch a sample that has four different openings after etching for five minutes say so depth is depth different across each of the pattern due to loading effect which dimension will lead these are the four dimensions that he have okay so which of these four 0.5 1 2 or 5 microns will actually give the lowest its depth due to the loading effect We saw that for a smaller, yes. That's a smaller uh, the dimensions, the better, uh, higher the loading effect. Yeah, higher the loading effect. So lower will be the etching that is happening. So lower edge depth will lead to the lowest dimension that is 0.5 micron. 
since it is smaller the diffusion of the <laughs> molecules might not happen to that now high anisotropy is achieved with low energy ion and low ion flux high en ion energy and high ion flux low ion energy and high ion flux or high ion energy and low ion flux yes any high high flux and low energy high flux and low energy low energy and why low energy because we want it to be slow and controlled but if we have very low energy we might not get uh, our adequate amount of hm that is why we need high flux in that case so it will be low ion energy and high ion flux that is c uh, no no it's high anisotropy no, this one is wrong so so this is what we said high energy and low no it's high energy okay, okay. Uh, low yeah what this is? one is wrong yeah I think for the low ion uh, energy, it will have a low uh, damage to the substrate. It's for cleaning yeah, so, purpose, right? Yeah, for cleaning purpose, it is. Uh, it's uh, okay. Yeah, high, yeah, high. Edge. So a DC bias is developed in the electrodes when the RF source is connected to electrode through an inductor, a capacitor, a resistor, or none of these. A capacitor, a blocking a capacitor. Yeah, blocking capacitor is used. Uh, in that case, a DC bias is developed in the electrode. Okay. So, any questions still here? In the next class, we will be covering process integration. Next week is uh, process integration. Okay. Uh, not from my side. Okay. okay. Yeah, and uh, one extra class I have uh, requested for uh, this 10th yeah 10th october in which we will be seeing a complete overview of the whole uh, fabrication process taking some small examples like uh, sir is covering in too much of details uh, like going too much theoretically in that we will just see the process aspects how it is done okay what is the principle what is uh, the equation and these things we are learning here okay uh, in this class we will just see what is the process? How you do if you are just uh, a person who has to work in microfabrication? Okay, how it is done step by step? What are the things that we are, in a sense, a general overview of the whole thing we have done? Okay, so that we will be covering in that class. So now you will get an email regarding that. I think uh, the timing is 6 p.m. Yeah, so now uh, that in that class we will be discussing this and you can. Uh, if some part you are not able to understand or you have some query, we can discuss in that class. Okay. 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 Yeah. So that's okay. all for today. Yeah, thank you. In the next one. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thanks.